Mindset, I think, is one. Somebody was talking to me just before about the CEO of Cambridge University at the Central European Framework CEO. Somebody was saying that Joe Polshock was saying that you know, the attitude in the UK or in Europe is that unless you meet both the headwords and the grammatical uh, strictures of these things, you can't sell your books. I mean, if you, if you read your book intensively, then you're going to view it very, very differently to the way you read it, the same text extensively. And therefore, you know, your knowledge of certain things is either very, very initial, whatever you read slowly, or it's going to be very, very deep. And yeah, it's going to be very, very deep. You either know it really well, you don't know it really well, depending on what you're doing with the same text, which is a stupid, absolutely crazy notion. So, yeah. I'll have to see what you can do with readability. Are you planning on doing some formula or some kind of formula? Mathematical formula? That was the idea going in. Um, going in, yes. As, as I'm sure you've probably sat down and tried to come uh, up with something that makes sense. Not easy. Not easy. Oh, yes. Not entirely to be desired either. So well, I mean, in the end, the readability formula doesn't, doesn't say anything about the plot. It doesn't yeah. say whether it's a good story. Exactly. It doesn't say if the characters are good. The plot or, or right. the plot. Well, the thing, too, is you can put the same words into a text yes. and then just reshuffle them all <coughs> alphabetically. You're just yeah. putting in the same numbers. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, in the end, it doesn't really tell you much about the story at all. This is why, I mean, Charlie is very, very big on lexiles and that kind of thing. Did you know some methods? Right, sorry. Right. 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 It's, the, it's the ghetto <laughs> solution. <laughs> I like the thrust of it, but I'm just not feeling this Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very, very much for coming to my presentation. I hope uh, you find it a useful use of your time. Um, I don't have a handout, but um, at the end of the presentation, please feel free to grab a copy of our manual, which explains the Talk University Census Dream Program uh, in English and Japanese. It's a published by our Center for Professional Development, so it's available for free. Right, so I'm going to be talking about extensive reading from our students' point of view. 
Um, and I really wanted to do this because we're really into numbers in our program. We've crunched numbers extensively to set goals and do the grades for students uh, and try really try to set our expectations at the point where we're pushing the students, but it's not overwhelming. It's not too much for them. Um, and so we've got we've got pay. I mean, this spreadsheet goes down for about 15 of these, right? That feed into each other and, and do various things. And we've also been obsessed with building up the institutions, getting enough books, uh, setting up the levels, figuring out how to inform the students of things, making sure that we have enough stuff. Right? And uh, even to the point of setting up spaces for the students. But today, and of course the, the program itself, has taken four years to write. Um, and in fact, it's changed already. This, we published this in March. The program's now quite different from how it's written down here. We've, we've moved on as it was. It's a continuous process here. But in a way, I wanted to take a step back from all of this, from the numbers and the books and the library and the, the program and the teachers, uh, because at the end of the day, it's really about each learner and their experience. My goal for this program is to encourage the students to become English readers forever, for life. Right? So this one semester program, and it's just one semester, probably 14 weeks of classes. In that very, very short time, we're trying to get the students to make a reading habit. And basically that's going to be about the, the feelings they have towards the books. Do they experience success? interest, fun, with the books or not. And one big part of that is that we're not going to have very, very high success rates with that. For me, my off-the-cuff goal is maybe 10%. If 10% of my students become readers of English, I think this program is extremely successful. That's my goal. Obviously, the more the better. But I'm not aiming for everyone's going to suddenly start reading English uh, in their free time. One, it really, just before I start, one really encouraging thing um, is just before the semester started this year, I went to the library to you know, write word counts in books uh, for several days. And some students were there reading. And those students didn't have a reading class. The reading class was finished. Grades were finished. The only reason they would be in the library reading is because they wanted to be. So for me, that, that was a fantastic moment. That validated everything. But um, so I'm going to talk about this today. So I'm going to introduce the program really quickly because apparently I've got 20 minutes to do this talk. Um, I'm going to talk about a survey that we take every semester. At the end, it's an exit survey of the students. Uh, I'm, going to talk, I'm going to show you some student feedback and some student reactions to books, because that for me is the key, right? The student's finding, it's the home run book, right? I think Krashen talks about it. The one book that changes students from not being a reader to being a reader. Right? They, they just need to find one. Okay, so uh, these are the kind of the key points of our program. We have five levels. Um, we wanted to keep it simple, so the Yomi Yasasa, we didn't need that amount of detail in our program. Right, so we went with the Extensive Reading Foundation scale, and kind of went that way. So red, these are the headwords for each level, the cutoff point. So red, orange, up to blue. Uh, in four years, um, about five students have finished. They, they've cleared the blue level. We let them read ungraded material, right, whatever they like. Um, I think this is the, our unique selling point. Everyone starts at the lowest level. Everyone. It doesn't matter. They can be from India and, and practically be native speakers. They still start at the lowest level. And they have to clear a certain amount of words to move up. So 30,000 words of red, they go to orange, 70,000 words, they go to yellow, and so on through the program. Um, we do at least 45 minutes of silent reading in each 90 minute class. So half the class is silent reading. And we have about 13 classes where we can do that. 
First class, we can't read, we're, we're explaining. Last class, it's, we're finishing up. And I thought we had high expectations, but this morning, uh, two presenters said they had higher expectations. 150,000 per semester for one, 300,000 for the other. But these are our expectations. Students <coughs> must read 100,000 words in the semester, otherwise they fail. Um, and to get a top grade, they need to read more than 300,000. Now, we've done the math for this. If you have a look in here, we've got tables that show uh, reading speed against how many words they should read in a semester. And it's several hours a week outside of class if they want to get a top grade. So, very committed students. All right, the survey. We do an exit survey. So, in the last class, the students do the survey. And we do it every semester. So, we've got two semesters worth of data at the moment from last year. Um, these are the results. This is two small rooms, sorry about that. But basically, um, 300 students in the first semester, almost 300 students in the second semester, uh, two thirds male, one third female. We're an engineering focused university. Um, this was very surprising to my colleagues, to us, to everyone. This, this is a reading habit. Do you have a reading habit in your native language? And about 60% of students hardly ever read in Japanese. And this is at top universities, so these are very academic students. 60% of them don't read Japanese. Yeah. Did you make any distinctions between what kind of things they're reading or not reading? We said everything. Yeah, anything Manga, including magazines, newspapers, websites. books, <laughs> even their <the> textbooks? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that counts as. Uh, basically, it's uh, uh, do you have a reading habit? Including magazines and, and manga and so on. Free time reading. Yeah. Any, many things. Uh, we were shocked by these numbers, really. Um, next thing is uh, have you had experience of ER? Have you done ER before? Um, um, the second semester, we, we've got some students that did it in the first semester for the first time. That's what this number is. Oh, sorry. But most of them know. So 70% know. And even the ones that said yes, they said yes, we did it at high school, yes, we did it at junior high school, we asked them, and they didn't do extensive reading. They read one book in the summer holiday. So they, they, they basically, they were equating reading graded readers with doing extensive reading. So almost no students have actually done extensive reading. Um, uh, this was, in this class, did you get more input than in a normal class? And predictably, most of them said yes. Uh, did your English improve after taking this class? We're very happy with this. Over 90% said yes. So this is a great number for us to show the administration. We <laughs> say, please let us do this more. Um, what kind of books do you like? This is very, very interesting for me because I, I, make the, I order the books from the library. 15% of students, more or less, um, say they prefer non-fiction. And that 25% say uh, they like non-fiction and fiction. So 40% of students like non-fiction books. And there aren't very many. So we find it quite a struggle to get enough, especially low-level non-fiction books. At the end of the class, we said, what level do you think you are? Right? So they've gone through our system. So even if they've reached the green level, are you comfortable at the green level? And about half the students are yellow. Right, so that's like bookworms three, four kind of level, that medium, 1500 headwords. And there's a few higher, very few are still on red, right? Uh, we said, how many times to use the library? This is mainly so that we can get the library to give us more money. Um, but we found that, so this goes from, we don't go to the library, all the way up to we go to the library five times a week to get English books, right? And, but 60%, no, 70% went to the library one or two times uh, a week or more. So that's very good for us and very good for the library. And in fact, this year, the library said to me, uh, you don't have a cap on your budget. We'll buy whatever you want. So that was because of this, because their budget depends on utilization figures. And stuff. Um, That's a mistake. Uh, this is weekly reading. How much time did you spend reading? 
and it goes from less than 15 minutes at the top down to two and a half hours at the bottom. Right. 12%, 30% in the second semester. So I think what happened here is we got better at the orientation in the second semester. So we got better at explaining, at giving examples, at setting up a kind of peer pressure atmosphere. So there are a lot more students reading more in the second semester. Uh, did you enjoy reading, was this question. And it goes from, it was fantastic, down the way to it was bad. And I was really happy that everyone, basically, there was one person in each one that said it was bad or not, not particularly good. But everyone else said it was either okay, good, very good. And most of them said very good. So again, very, very happy as a teacher because it's a positive experience that we're delivering, basically. So I'll take questions at the end. Um, do you think your reading ability improved through this class? So this is the yeah, just reading ability. We didn't say English reading ability. We probably should have. Um, and most of them said uh, it improved a lot or a certain amount. Yeah. We put this question in because it's quite difficult to say, okay, read for 45 minutes and I'll just kind of hang out at the front, right, or, or read. So we felt that we weren't really doing anything. And we thought, well, if the students feel that we're not doing anything, this is not a good thing. Right? So we said, do you feel that your teacher is giving you enough guidance and, and support and, and all the rest of it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. 90% said yes. So again, it made us feel a bit better. And then, he, this is weird, because then, do you feel the teacher's giving you enough feedback? Because we don't give feedback. The students write the book reports, but we don't mark them, because the volume is, is, would be overwhelming. But again, they said, yes, we get enough feedback. And I think the reason for this is because every week they get uh, a grade. They get a score for their reading, they get a score for their book reports, so they're getting this con constant feedback in, in that way from scores. Uh, do you think being able to read in English is important for you? And we've got fantastic numbers again. So our students do think English is important. Again, they're quite academic, so they probably think it's good for their career. <coughs> and then do you think you will continue doing extensive reading after the class is over? Now, of course, pinch of salt for this, I think. You know. Right now, yes, but two months later, maybe not. But still, 80% or so said yes, we want to continue doing extensive reading. Okay, so the feedback we ask for twice a semester, roughly in the middle, we'll ask for feedback, and then at the end again. And my, my version of feedback is I say, okay, what do you like about the class? What do you dislike about the class? Do you have any suggestions? They can write in English or Japanese. Uh, I give them about five minutes. Okay, so quite a short time. Generally, I'm going to show you examples, but I want to give you the general picture as well. Generally, it's mostly positive feedback. There's a couple of negative points. A few students say, we don't like red books, we don't want to read the red books, they're too low. Um, some students say we should change the book report questions because it's the same question every week. It's difficult to write. But not many. It's about 10% of negative feedback. Very few suggestions. You know, I mean, they're not teachers, they're just students. But occasionally there'll be a good one. We started doing speaking activities from a student suggestion. So occasionally they'll be good ideas. So I'll just give you some examples here. Oh, that's terrible. Can we turn the light off actually? That might help. A little bit. Okay, so reading English books is good for me. Sometimes it's fun, but sometimes it's terrible. Right? So this is a student that has mixed feelings here. But they, they do feel it's useful, right? Um, it's important to read English books. Uh, because reading English books makes people feel good to English, or about English, I guess. Um, um, so it's good that we can enjoy reading and, and choose books and become interested. And that way we get the, the meaning into our head, so the story, we, we can get the, the meaning rather than thinking about it. Uh, we can read books we like, and we have time to speak English. So we do have some speaking time in the class as well. Um, and it's important we can choose the books. So the students are restricted to levels, but within that level they have complete freedom of, of choice in terms of choosing books. Um, 
if this class was not, I wouldn't have chance which I can read English books. And I think this is quite important, is, is having the, because they're so busy. We, we surveyed our students, how many core do you have a week? And uh, it was between 15 and 22, 90 minute classes, right? So if, uh, if everyone's giving them two, three hours of homework, that's what? 30 hours of classes and 60 hours of homework per week. That's, it's not sustainable, basically. So, it, for us, the, the reading time in class is really, really important. And we, we, we've set the, if you have a look later on, um, we've set the levels so that you can pass the course by doing about two or three minutes reading a day. Right? So the students aren't necessarily going to be like, oh my god, you know, English will kill me. Um, it's not easy to read books, but reading's fun. You can choose books. Um, it's important. I'm not good at reading. It took a lot of time, but I like it. That's interesting. Uh, what's good? Uh, reading books in itself is good. Reading books in English. Is, uh, if, if we didn't have a class, we wouldn't do it, basically. Because other things would take priority. All students have a, a, a ranking, right? This is important, this is important, this is important. Maybe doing English because it's good for you isn't important. So we take out the time. Um, ah, this, this is my favorite comment, and we liked it so much we even put it in the handbook. So I think reading books, English books, is very important. I have two reasons. First, reading English books is a lot of fun. In Japan, English class is almost translating. It's tired and not happy. <laughs> Second, introducing English books is useful for the point of speaking English. Okay, so tired and not happy is not words that I'm happy to link to the English language. Right? Okay, finally, I'll talk about book reports. So in our system, we don't have the students write book reports about red books because they're really short and, and there's no substance there. So we start from orange. Uh, on the orange reading record, on the back, they can write up to three reports, right? They don't have to write a report for every single book. Uh, they, they get credit for writing up to three. Um, for yellow, it's up to two, they're longer. And for green and blue, it's up to one. Okay. And these are book reports. So I love Holmes, but the book that I really like in the class is different. It's 20,000 Under the Sea. I read it twice. Other levels. So he read it in the orange level and at the yellow level. Captain Nemo, its character, is not a good man, but attract me. He follows the romance of the sea. I like him very much. So this kind of emotional reaction to a book, this is what I look for in the students. So that they, they really identify with the character or with the book. I had students write things like, it made me cry. I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> not that I normally enjoy making my students cry. But um, this is wonderful, again, so talk about the gift of the, the Maji, Meiji. Um, so I've read this story before, I like this book because it's interesting for me that the main topics are money and love. Uh, oh, Henry's a famous writer, I want to read his story the last evening, English. Um, talk about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is a very common comment. I knew the title, I'd heard of the book, I didn't know the story, I'm really happy I had the chance to read it. And I think that's valid. I mean, they, yeah, they're simplified, but the plot's there, the story's there, <coughs> the, the, the book's there. Students reading Shakespeare, they're like, yes, I heard about Macbeth, but now I know the story, it's great. So I think this is a really, really positive thing here. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, I've known this book, but I hadn't known details of the story. It's strange, but I like it, because the ending is happy. <laughs> uh, talking about White Fang. So I've read this book before Orange Love. This is quite common with our students. They'll read the easy version, and it's not enough. They want more of the story, so they'll read it, the same book again, at yellow or green, at a higher level. I recommend this book to every dog lover because they can have a chance of thinking about loving dogs again. Could be misinterpreted. <laughs> Love story. 
When I was a high school student, my school teacher gave this book as a homework. This time I wanted to compare my English skills, so I read the book again. This is a student that had one of those summer homeworks to read. At the time, what was probably too difficult for them. I like Frankenstein, I'd never read it. I didn't know that Frankenstein is not the name of the monster. Fantastic. Um, it was a horrible story, but it makes me to think about bioethics. <laughs> I think it's a very good story. And then this one. This is um, about a book called Leaving Microsoft to Change the World, which I love personally. Uh, it's a true story about a guy who was a, a kind of CEO, well, high level executive of Microsoft and went off to Nepal and, and started doing uh, NGO type activities instead. This book genre is document or non fiction. The story takes place 1998 to now, mostly in developing countries. This book's plot is essay. The main character is John Wood. I like him. He was an officer in Microsoft, and he was rich and had a girlfriend, but he followed his hard voice, conscience. Uh, I think I can't do like him, so I respect him highly. If I were him, I wouldn't do like him. <laughs> in the end, his idea comes true. This thing is very cool, I think. So wonderful kind of reactions from students. Now, of course, I've picked these. I've chosen them from thousands. I have thousands of these on here. But we get them, we get these reactions, and I'm just looking for about one from each student, right? Um, so what, what's my point? Uh, my point is that it's quite easy to get stuck in the numbers, right? Just that thing about word targets and grades, and you haven't got enough, and what's your percentage, and have we got enough yellow books in the library this week, and, and stuff like that. And it's good to take a step back, I think, and really think about what is this about? It's about reading, it's about enjoying books and stories and, and escaping from life every so often. So I think that's very, very important. Okay, if you want to email me, that's my email address. This is my blog. I write about extensive reading about half the time. And this is our information page for the university. So we've got word counts and the university uh, program explanation on there, bilingual. Um, also, if you like, before you go, please feel free to grab one of these handbooks. This is our manual. And that's it. So, any questions at this point? Yes? Um, are you planning to collect data on, from the students, their reactions to your program itself, rather than just reactions to the reading? Write about, sort of, I like the program, but I'd like it, like it to do this, I prefer we don't do this, and I'd really like it if the school did that, and da da da, -da. Yeah, yeah, um, that's actually what um, these were. Okay. That's, that's a reaction that to the... That's a reaction program. to the reading itself, but I mean, talking about how to modify it, how can we improve our, uh, our reading program itself, rather that's than just... That's what this is. That's all that as well, okay. That's just so we don't get very many things like that. Okay. The main one at the moment is we want to read uh, less of the lowest level books, okay. so we're thinking about that. Maybe reduce it from 30,000 to 20,000. Are, are they able? Sorry, are, are they able to individually reach that thirty thousand at their own pace and then move up, or is it a set period? Oh no, no, it's it's completely free. We, everyone starts at red and starts reading. We do forty-five minutes. They go to the library, read as much as you can. Some students finish it in a week, um, and some take longer. I've got about I've got four hundred at the moment in extensive reading classes, and I think there's about ten that are still in red. I got to talk to them. Like, mm -hmm. How much are you reading? Yeah. Are they in the uh, No. Is it a reading <coughs> class? It's a reading class. Okay. Um, we have, uh, they have they have compulsory English classes for two years. So this is this is Agor one A reading. Yeah. Um, your survey itself is anonymous, right? Oh yes, yes. All the feedbacks anonymous. Yeah. I think some of your um, yes and no questions. Maybe you shouldn't have such a strict boundary there. Uh, I mean, you were saying pinch of salt, they're going to give you a yes answer. But if you give them a, a level of uh, okay. that's a it. level that's of a response, so a clearer picture of what's happening. For the continuing reading and stuff. Hmm. And your, 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 your goal or your, it's necessary to read 100,000 or 300,000? 100,000 is the plus. <coughs> um, if you want to get one of the top grades, you'd have to clear 300,000. But 
letter to the students. I mean, a lot, uh, some of them, they just want the credit. And that's fair enough. I mean, why? If I was a lawyer, you know, <laughs> taking, you know, Urdu as a, as a compulsory subject, I might not be that into it. Is that the full grade for the course? Or are there it's, other elements? It's about 80%. The weekly reading and the total reading. So we figured out that if we don't measure their weekly score, we get some weird things, right? Like try and do it all at the end. Not, not good. Um, and apart from this, we we give them a score for the book report. Um, we give them a score for participation in the activities, uh, attendance. Uh, I do an online vocabulary thing. Danger, so they get scored for that. Do you use Moodle Reader? No, I I really tried to, um, but I couldn't make our program fit in Moodle Pen Reader, mm. and also I, I suspect it would be another disincentive to read in a way. Mm. That doesn't give you a count of how many words they've read, like a running total. It does. It's quite nice. Yeah, but as you said, some books might not provide word counts. So. Right. Um, yeah. the, Tracking the, the numbers, is, is, it takes 10 minutes. So we do it during the, the reading time. The students do that themselves. They give us a weekly report. And then while they're reading, the teacher takes 10 minutes and just inputs the numbers into the uh, spreadsheet, which makes grading very easy at the end as well. Yeah. Do you have a breakdown on percentage of students that hit those 300,000, 100,000 marks? I think 100,000 was everyone. Apart from the ones that dropped out from non attendance, <coughs> which is minimal, less than 5%, um, reached 300,000, it's about 20% last year, got to 300,000. <coughs> All right, so thank you very much. Just in time. Oh.